Like many here, I sometimes have trouble with sleep. Sometimes I toss and turn at the beginning of the night, but sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, unable to go back to sleep. Well, our tradition teaches that King David had that exact problem, and that many nights King David would awake, wide awake, and begin writing his book of Psalms. And on one particular night, when he was feeling especially alone, King David penned perhaps one of the most indelible words in our tradition. Mima amakim karaticha Adonai. Out of the depths, he wrote, I have called to God. This profound statement in just one sentence nearly perfectly summarizes one of the existential and one of the greatest problems of what it means to be a human, that of loneliness. Now, I want to do an experiment. If you felt lonely over the past six months, at any point, with any degree, I want you to raise your hand. The visual is unbelievable up here. <laughs> it is totally pervasive. And as a congregational rabbi in Park Slope, Brooklyn, I have seen that this is perhaps one of the most profound problems that my congregation faces. And it occurs in so many avenues. People are lonely when they deal with sickness, as if they are the only ones who understand their pain. People are lonely as they're nearing the end of life. People are lonely when they have new children confined to their homes because their babies have not yet had their shots. Then again, there are those who are dealing with the loneliness of single life, seeing their friends around them get married and wondering when their time will be. And then there are those who are dealing with the loneliness of being married. Those people who used to look into them now look through them, and they lie next to a stranger nearly every single night. Now, before I go on, I want to draw a distinction between two things, aloneness and loneliness. Aloneness is the act of not being around other people. And as we know, it can be profoundly meaningful. One can go into the forest or hike and find wholeness and peace at that point. Rabbi Nachman, for example, it said, used to go out into the forest and commune with God in a process known as heat bodedut. However, we can feel lonely in the most crowded of places. I remember the other day after a particularly difficult day, sitting on the train, hoping to make eye contact. In New York, that's quite difficult. <laughs> that the more crowded we get sometimes, the more difficult it is to connect. I was talking with somebody recently who attended a big Purim party, and as the room filled up more and more, she felt like she belonged less and less. Loneliness isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, evolutionarily, it's quite important. Just as hunger makes us eat, and thirst makes us drink, and pain can help remind us to remove our hand when it comes too close to a fire, Loneliness tells us to go back into community, to find the safety and the comfort of our peers. But when loneliness becomes chronic, when it's not just a temporary state, that's when we find real trouble. And in fact, studies have shown that those who feel chronically lonely have higher blood pressure, higher rates of depression, and even some, some studies have shown that it can have the same toll on a body as smoking throughout one's life. And it's for this reason that when our tradition spoke about the creation of humanity, after we learn that God makes the sun, the moon, and the stars, God makes animals, plants, and humans, and God calls each one of these things tov, good, the first thing that God calls lo tov, not good, is loneliness. For in the book of Genesis, it says, and God said, Lo tov hiot adam levado. It is not good that humanity should be alone, that humanity should be lonely. 
So what are we supposed to do about this loneliness? Well, we can take inspiration from Rabbi Joseph Soloveitchik, who wrote in his famous book, Lonely Man of Faith, about two different states of being, two different personalities that are within each of us. And I'll summarize him loosely. These two personalities are called the majestic personality and the covenantal personality. Now, we are so good at the majestic personality because the majestic personality is, in our, is our inner drive to conquer the world. We want to build the biggest buildings. We want to make it to space. We want our institutions to thrive. We want lives of innovation and growth. And we're quite good at this. However, we often neglect the covenantal personality and this drive is our drive for connection, for deep and meaningful connection with our fellow human being. We want to see them and we also want to be seen by them. And all too often, because reaching our covenantal personalities is so difficult, our communities put all their effort into our majestic personalities. We'll host the biggest programs. We'll engage the most people. And we pride ourselves on this. But if we are really going to help stem the tide of loneliness that exists in all of our communities, then more than anything else, we need a change of pace. And we need to begin putting actions in place that don't just address our majestic, but that nourish our covenantal personalities as well. So how do we do this? We do this in three ways. First, we need to help those who are feeling lonely learn to cry out. King David wrote, out of the depths I call to you, God. Well, when we see other people in the depths, we need to foster a community such that they can open their mouths and let their lips declare their pain. We need groups and societies that give people the strength when they need another person to call out. And then once we hear their call, we need to do one of two things. First, we need to be there to help other people tell their story. We need to stand beside them with openness and love. And we need to say, I have heard your cry, tell me more. And with love, and with trust, we need to be there, asking them to go deeper and standing and holding their hand while they do it. And in addition to that, we need to walk with them for a little while in their suffering. We need to be with them in their loneliness. Brené Brown, who's a famous psychologist, writes that there is a fundamental difference between sympathy and empathy. She says that, and she uses an apt metaphor of someone stuck in that depth, in that hole. She says that when one is walking by that hole and they have sympathy, they peer into that hole, they ask how that person is doing, they even offer to throw something down into that hole, but then they keep walking. But true empathy means climbing down into that hole with that person to be in the pits, to stand with them in their loneliness, even for a short period of time. Because that is the only way that someone can feel less alone. And by feeling less alone, they begin to take steps toward moving past that loneliness. This is a hard thing to do. Because by looking into another person and allowing them to be seen, you have to also allow yourself to be seen. And if someone is really going to look into you, maybe you're worried about what they will find. But if you do that, and if we can foster communities that care about individuals and that care about what is in our depths, it's a little less scary and it makes a huge difference. We can do this we can emphasize the individual 
over the group. We can look at each person's soul instead of counting numbers. And if we do this, our communities will be left all the richer and all the better. So I want to leave you with a parable by Rabbi Chaim of Sants, who tells a story of a person lost in the depths of the forest. He's looking around and he can't find anyone and he knows no way out. So mustering all his strength, he finally cries out. And who does he find but someone walking around a bend? And calling to this person, they meet. And he says, sir, help me find my way out because I am lost in the depths of the forest. The person smiles and says, I cannot help you for I do not know the way out. But what I do know is this, the way from which I came leads nowhere. So let us join hands and we'll find our way out together. How will you have the strength when you need it to cry out? And how will we as friends, as family, as loved ones and as a Jewish community heed that call when it comes? Thank you very much. Thanks for watching Eli Talks. Click through or subscribe to the Eli Talks channel for more inspired Jewish ideas.